So in this video, we're going to be talking about the basics of property controls and how to use them to create configurable code components in Framer. If you skipped the first video in this series, then to catch you up, what we're going to build in these next few lessons is this mask code component, which allows us to which allows us to add a gradient mask to pretty much anything we want. So in the last video, we just created this basic code component to play around with things like sizing and styling. But in this lesson, we're going to start building things out. So first up, I'm just going to remove a bunch of stuff from here. So I'm going to remove this box style object and this tint property control. And then I'm just going to remove a bunch of these divs and just remove tint from here because it's no longer present. And we'll set both of these to any prefer fixed. Okay, so now we just have this div with a background color, but nothing inside of it. So first up, we're just gonna put an image inside of this div. So let's just write image and close off that tag. And then we just need to give it a source. And then I'm just gonna paste in a random unsplash image. Okay, so there we have our image. Now I just wanna add some styling. So it stretches 100% of the width and height. So just say width 100%. And again, we have to wrap that in a string and then height and press save and you can see that that's now stretching our image so what we want to do is say object fit and we'll say cover okay so now we can no longer see the red background of our div so we're just going to remove that and now we need to give it a mask so the way we do that is with a css property called mask image but for reasons i won't really go into here we need to write webkit mask image in this case. So if we do that, and now we can pass this a gradient to mask its contents. So I just need to write a string here. So we'll say linear gradient, and then we open some brackets. So the first value is the angle of the gradient. So we're just gonna say 180 degrees, then a comma. The second value is the first color stop. So we're just gonna say RGBA, and then zero, 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 and we want the opacity to be one and then add a comma and the third value is the second color stop and for that we're just going to say transparent so if i hit save you can see i've misspelled transparent here now when i hit save you can see that this image is being masked by this gradient and the way this mask works is it uses the transparency of each color to dictate what's visible so when something is 100% opaque, that means the area behind it is 100% visible. And when it's 100% transparent, that area is not visible. Now we can also configure how far along each of these color stops is by just passing in a percentage. So if I say 50% over here for color stop one, you can see that it moves that point much further down. And I can add the same for color stop two. So I can say that that should be 60%. And now there's a very hard drop off between those two because there's only 10% between them. Okay, so that's the basics of using a gradient as an image mask in CSS. But now we want the ability to configure this gradient. And the way we do that in Framer is by using property controls. Now we spoke a little bit about them in the previous video, but let's write them from scratch. So you can see at the top of this file, we're importing the add property controls function from Framer, as well as this control type object. So to add property controls to our component, we have to write it outside of the scope of this function. So we'll go down here and then we want to call that add property controls function. So we're going to say add property control and open up some brackets. And it's going to take two parameters. The first one is the name of our component. So I'm going to write my component so that it matches this up here. And then the next one is a object. And in here, we're going to write all of our property controls. Now, each property control has a key and this key is what we'll use in our component the first property control we want to create is one to control the direction of our gradient so we're going to call it direction and then we open up an object like so and the first thing we need to specify on each property control is its type so we write type and then we call this control type object that we import from framer so we'll say control type and then dot and you can see here we have all of the control type options available to us. And for this one, we just want a number. So I'm just going to go down, select number and press enter. Now, the next two things we need to configure are the title. So if I write title here, and this is just going to be a string. So I'm going to say direction. And this is the label that appears in the right hand panel when configuring this. So after that, what we want to specify is the default value. So if we say default value, we're gonna say 180. And if we save that and we add our component to the canvas, 
you can see we have a property control now called direction and it has a value of 180 and there's a range slider next to it. Now you can see that the max of this slider is 100, the min is zero, but if we click on this, we can go higher than 100. It's all a little bit weird. So what we want to do is configure all of those values. If we hop back into our component, we can specify a min. So min, we're gonna say zero, specify a max. And because we're specifying degrees on a circle here, we're just gonna say 360. We can also specify the units. So we're gonna say degrees, and that'll specify what units are displayed in the little text box when we're dealing with this. And we can also specify the step. So if we wanted it to, we could make it go up in 10 degree increments. But for now, we'll just keep it to one. If I press save and go back and look at our code component, you can see we've got the degree symbol there and we can move the slider between zero and 360. Now we could get rid of this slider if we wanted to. We could go in here and we could say display stepper and set that to true. And then if we go back, you can see we've got the stepper UI instead. But obviously that's not very well suited to our use case. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. So now that that's configured, we need to actually consume it from our component. So how this works is when a user configures a property control like this, that value 245 is passed down into our code component via this props parameter. And the way we consume that is by destructuring it from props. So we'll type direction here because direction is the key we specified for this property control. So now if I console.log this like so, and press save. And then we can open up our little console over here. You can see right at the bottom, there's a little value and it's set to 180. And that's because that is the default value we've specified over here. Now, if we go back to the canvas and we preview this desktop, and then we just go straight back to our code component, we can now select the desktop as a preview over here. So we can see our code component in use on the canvas. And when we log that value in this context, you can see that the value is 245, which is the value we've selected over here. Okay, great. So now that we know our direction is being passed down into our component, we need to consume it from our CSS property. The way we do that is instead of these quotes, we're gonna use backticks like so. That allows us to pass in values straight into the string. And to do that, we need to write a little dollar sign and then open brackets and then close those brackets. And then in here, we can just write direction. And you can see that that value is being passed into our mask. If I switch back to the default preview for this component and then go down to the default value, you can see now when I change it, it changes on the right here. And in principle, this is all there is to property controls. There are more advanced use cases, but the principle is the same. We're just taking information from the user in the canvas and passing it down to our component. Okay, so let's build out the other property controls to configure this gradient. So we can just duplicate this direction and we're gonna paste another one in here and we're gonna call it start position and it's gonna be the position value of the first stop on our gradient. So in here we'll write start position and we're gonna give it a default value of zero and it's gonna have a max of 100 and the units are gonna be percent. And then we're just gonna do the exact same thing again, but we're gonna call this one end position. And we'll change this title. And instead of a default value of zero, we're gonna give it a default value of 100. So now we just need to scroll up here and insert these values. So first up, we need to destructure them. So we're gonna set a start position and end position. And then we're gonna put them into our string in the same way. We're gonna use a little dollar sign and this one will be start position and do the same over here at the dollar sign end position. Now, if I hit save, you can see that the gradient is sort of reset because the default values are being passed in. If I change this to be 10, you can see that the fall off of the gradient happens much sooner. Now, I also kind of want to add the same sort of thing, but for opacity. So I'm literally just going to copy this and just paste it in. And we're going to rename it to be start opacity. And the default value will be one. And the max will be one. And the min zero. And we're going to set the step to 0 0.1. And then we're just going to remove the unit. And then I'm just going to do the same again for the end opacity. So. And we need to change both of these labels and this default value will be zero. Okay, so now we just need to go up and add those, start opacity, end opacity, 
and then we're just going to put them in over here so this will be start opacity and then over here we have transparent but we can just do the same as here so we'll say rgba change this to end opacity and if all goes well nothing will have changed over here uh, you can see i've misspelled opacity here so make sure that that is correct and now you see it's back to normal. So back in canvas, you can see that we can configure pretty much every aspect of our gradient. We can change the position and we change the start opacity and the end opacity. But this is getting a little bit out of hand. So we need to figure out how to organize our property controls. So if we hop over to the docs, you can see that we have this property control type called object. And object allows us to nest property controls inside of one object. And this should help us clean things up a little bit. So if I hop back over to Framer, one way we can configure this is to add a property control for mask and then give it a type of object. And then the way an object works is it accepts controls like so. We open up another object and we can add our property controls in here. So we could, in theory, move all of these inside of our mask. But you'll notice now that the mask has stopped working. And that's because these properties we're pulling out of props are actually in a mask object now instead. So if we do something like this, we can pull those properties out of mask and our mask is working again. Now, if we go back to the canvas, you can see that all of these controls are now nested within one menu and this looks so much cleaner. Now we can also use arrays of property controls. Not that it makes much sense for our code component, but let's see how that looks in the UI. So you can imagine if we wanted to support multiple stops on our gradient instead of just the start stop and the end stop, we might want a way for the user to add stops. And the way we would do that is by making a key called stops and giving it a control type of array and then adding a control. And then we could actually nest an object inside of an array. The syntax is a little bit different. Instead of giving a key here, we just say type control type object. And then we give it the controls. So we could do something like that and take something like those controls and paste them in. And then we could give it a default value like so, we could say position zero, one. And now when we go back to our component, you can see that we've got this stops array and it has one item already in it because we have our default value. And if we go in there, you can see that we have our original stops. So click on those, we can edit them and then we can add more stops and go back and keep doing that for a while. But we could also set a max count on this array so make that five and that would set a hard limit on the amount of stops we could add. Now we don't actually need this for our component, but you start to get an idea of how advanced you can make things. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And something we do actually wanna add is we wanna add the ability to put a border radius on this container element. Now for this, we need to use a fused number type of control. And it's a little bit different from a standard number control. If we create a random frame and go down to the radius section, you can see that we have this specialized control and this control is called a fused number property control. And basically it toggles between a single value or a set of four values. Now this example code is actually exactly what we need, but to understand how this actually works, it makes a bit more sense to write it out. Okay, so back in our component, we're gonna to go to the bottom of our object here and we're gonna write a key called radius and make sure it has one A and we're gonna give it a type. It's gonna be control type fused number. Then we're gonna give it a default and we're actually gonna say default value of zero. And let's make sure we give it a title. I'm just gonna say radius. Okay, so now is where stuff gets a little bit weird. The next thing we need to specify is a toggle key and we're gonna call it is mixed. And so this will be the name of the variable that tells us whether or not the control is in mixed mode or combined mode. So next up, we need to provide the titles we want for each of those modes. So we're gonna call them toggle titles. And this is an array of strings. So we want the first one to be all and the next one to be individual. And then we need to specify the keys of all the separate values. So those are called value keys. And this is an array of string values. And so we're gonna start with top left and then top right and bottom right and bottom left. And these are the variable names for each corner. 
And then I'm just going to duplicate this and rename this one to value titles. And this is going to be what displays above each of those inputs. So we can actually just make it two letters, say TL, it's going to be TR, BR and BL. And then we can set a min on this too. So we'll set that to zero. Okay, so now that we've declared all of that, let's go back to our component and you'll see, oh, nothing's showing up. And I think that's because I've nested this in the wrong place. So if we just push it down one and then this is actually called value labels, not titles, which is confusing and save that. Now, if we go to our component, you can see we've got this radius field and we can split it between the individual inputs or the combined input. Okay, so to use this we need to pull all of those values out of here so the first one we want to get is radius and then we want to pull out this is mixed key and then we need to pull out top left top right bottom left bottom right okay so how do we actually use these then so we basically need to check if is mixed is set to true and then return a different style of border radius to our div so create a variable down here called Water radius. Then I'm going to say is mixed if that's true, return something else, return something else. And so if is mixed is actually true, we want to return the border radius as these four values. And if it is false, we want to return just this value. So for this one, we can just write radius and add pixel at the end there. And then for this one, we need to write top left, px, top right, and then the px, and the same for the rest of them. Okay, so now it's returning a mixed input or a combined input, depending on the value of this is mixed variable, which will be toggled by the property control itself. And the last step is to add this border radius to our div style here. So we can just add it after the style and save that. So now back on the canvas, I've just duplicated our component. The top one, we're gonna use the combined input and I'm gonna say 40 and that one's working. So now we wanna split this one and let's make this 12 and we'll make this 60, 12, 60. And it's a little bit difficult to tell if these ones are working because we're masking them out. So let's just adjust our mask a little little bit but yeah everything seems good okay so that's it for this video we've started to scratch the surface of some more advanced property control techniques like grouping with objects and arrays and the more advanced controls like fused number but in the next video we're going to carry on building out this component with even more property controls things like images and component instances that allow you to pull other components on the canvas into your code component see you in the next one